Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today I'm making a video that's a little bit outside my normal content, but still a very cool project that I wanted to bring you guys in on. Today, I'm gonna attempt to take my guitar building workshop off grid. Uh, and because it's me, of course, we're gonna try to do it on a budget. So let's see if we can make my guitar building workshop 100% energy independent for less than $1,000. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. So the way that this project came about is because uh, once I moved my sheds up closer to my house, I was able to run power to them just with an extension cord from my house. But it's not ideal. It's just a single 20 amp circuit and it shares that same 20 amp circuit with all of my outdoor receptacles on my house. So if we plug in any other high power appliances, uh, like if my kids are washing the car and they plug in the shop back, um, if I, any of those things are going at the same time that I'm running my CNC router, bam, trips the circuit. Now I do have a battery backup UPS for my CNC router, thanks to my Darren Enter Neo 2000. But if I didn't have that, it would have really been disastrous uh, on a few occasions. And honestly, it's just not ideal. I don't wanna be stressed about a circuit tripping in the middle of a CNC carve. So the plan has always been to run a dedicated sub panel to these sheds so they can have their own independent circuits from the rest of the house. The problem is that's really expensive. My buddy who's an electrician quoted me at about 3,000 to 3,500 to do the job. Uh, just And that's mostly just in materials. He actually even offered, uh, if I wanted to buy all the materials from him at his cost, he would just kind of show me how to set it up and then I could do all of it myself for like $2,000. But recently, I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed that solar and battery technology has really come down in price. Uh, I mean, especially compared to like four and a half years ago when I hit the road in an RV full time with my family, uh, solar stuff was still really expensive and we had awesome solar setups on our rigs. So off grid living is no stranger to us. We've done it a ton, um, especially when it comes to solar and battery and inverter power. And amazingly enough, the entire time that we were on the road, I was still building guitars out of my RV. So I know that uh, solar technology is good enough to do what I need to do. So the heart and soul of this project really are these two batteries that I got on Black Friday for $167 a piece. Uh, they're made by Dijolbermpu. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. I think the guy that started this brand probably just like spilt his beer on the keyboard and was like, Dijolbermpu, that's perfect. I mean, maybe his cat just jumped on his keyboard. I have no idea how you come up with a name like that. It's the most ridiculous name I've ever seen. Anyway, that's insane. Cause LifePo 4 batteries, when I started RVing, were like a thousand dollars a piece. And then over the last few years, I saw them come down to like the five, six hundred dollar range. Uh, sub two hundred dollars, absolutely unreal. I wasn't planning on making this video, except for I've seen these batteries drop a few times since then down to that hundred sixty seven dollar mark. So it's not just a Black Friday deal. Uh, it seems like they intend to keep a price at least pretty close to there. Also on Black Friday, deal. I got this Victron Smart Solar MPPT solar charge controller, as well as a 24 volt, 3000 watt continuous pure sine wave inverter. Behind me is a 250 watt panel from Trina Solar. I got that from a local solar contractor who uh, buys wholesale and then does installs and the panels that he has left over, he sells for cheap on Facebook Marketplace. So that's probably a huge secret is check out your local Facebook Marketplace for solar contractors doing the same thing. Okay, cause that's definitely hands down the best way to get the best deals on solar panels. I got that one for $85. Now I only have one panel for now, but that's because he only had one panel when I went there. Uh, he's gonna be getting some more in and I'm gonna hook up a second panel because that's what my charge controller can handle at 24 volts. And I think honestly, based on my experience with solar, that's gonna be enough. Uh, to run these two batteries in series for 24 volts at 100 amp hours. Uh, I think that's gonna be enough to run anything that I need to run. Uh, the biggest thing being my dust collection. That's the reason why I went with a really big inverter. 3000 watt continuous, 6000 watt peak. It's actually more inverter probably than these batteries can handle for now, but I would like to add a couple more batteries in the future. And so that just gives me the option to kind of grow. My goal today is I just wanna get the batteries and the inverter set up to make sure that it is in fact gonna be enough power to power up mainly my dust collection system. If it can power that up, then I know that we're gold and then I'll hook up the solar stuff and get those batteries charging on their own. Now you might notice right now that these batteries are connected in parallel. That means positive to positive, negative to negative. And that's what you gotta do before you connect them in series. You gotta charge them up to full and then connect them in parallel so that they will equalize voltages between the two batteries. So what I'm gonna do now is reconfigure it for 24 volts by connecting them in series. And that's really easy to do. Basically, I'm just gonna disconnect the positive on one 
and connect it to the negative on the other. And then I'll take the positive one that I disconnected and connect that to the positive of my inverter and the negative one I disconnected connect it to the negative on my inverter. Now for additional safety, I'm also gonna be splicing in this 200 amp circuit breaker into my positive wire, which means I'm gonna have to cut and crimp on some new ends. So I got these new ends, some heat shrink tubing and a crimper. And none of my heat shrink tubing is big enough for two gauge wire. So I'm just gonna wrap it in good old fashioned E-tape. All right, let's power it on and see what happens. 27.7 volts, that's looking pretty good so far. Let's get the voltmeter and see how much alternating current we're getting. Yeah, hovering around 115 volts. I would love it to be more like 120, but uh, to run 110 volt appliances, that's more than enough. I wonder what I should plug in first. I think first I'm gonna plug in my one horsepower shop vac. So clearly it works, but the display goes haywire when I start drawing power, which is kind of weird. I guess that's what I get for buying a cheap inverter. So if it can run a one horsepower shop vac, maybe it can run my one horsepower dust collector. I think since that's what I really want to know, we're just going to jump straight to that. All right, so this ghetto rigged Romex extension cord is my workshop power. So let's plug it in. All right. And test the lights. Lights work. And they don't flicker. How great. That's wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to kick on the desk collection and we'll see what happens. Oops, bumped it. No problem. And the router? All right, we'll go ahead and let the dust collection wind down, and now I'm going to fire up the dust collection and the router at the same time. And it sounds like the dust collection's come to a complete stop. Here we go. Router and dust collection at the same time. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Um, let's do the same thing with the lights on. I'm just curious if the lights are going to flicker at all when I do this. Yeah, I mean the lights flicker for half a second. Uh, not nearly as bad as when I'm running entirely on my UPS, so that's pretty incredible. All right, now I am obviously pretty thrilled with my little setup. That tells me that I got way more than enough juice here with the inverter and the battery bank. So I'm officially running my workshop off grid. How cool is that? Now the question is, do I have enough photo panels and charge strength to keep these batteries topped off? We're just gonna have to hook that stuff up and find out. It's getting kind of late in the evening, so I don't think I'm gonna actually be able to get to charging them today, uh, but I, hopefully I can get everything set up so they can start charging kind of first thing in the morning. I thought I could fit 10 gauge wire in there, but apparently cannot. That's what I have, so I'm just gonna keep stripping it back until it fits. That's in there pretty solid. I hate this. I hope I don't have to do this more often than once in a while. And I almost forgot that I need a circuit breaker between this and the battery, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. 20 amp circuit breaker for a 20 amp charge controller. All right, and the last fuse goes in between the photo panels and the charge controller, and I am losing daylight for sure. So there's no way I'm gonna get a chance to see this thing charged today but I got it pretty much all set up. As you can see, I rigged up an MC4 connector on this end so I can quickly connect and disconnect my one solar panel that I have right now. And so tomorrow when the sun's shining, I'll get that thing hooked up and then we'll see how this thing does. Another key piece that I'm going to install along with the solar charge controller is this 
battery balancer from Echo Worthy. And this is like the most mix matched solar setup in the whole world. Um, but what this does, because lithium ion batteries, they don't balance as easily as other uh, lead acid or AGM or gel batteries. Uh, it's good to have a battery balancer. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up and that just makes sure that these batteries charge and discharge at the same rate. Now these batteries do have a built-in 100 amp BMS which should help with that anyway, but I was told that I also need this. Um, but I was also told that I probably wouldn't need this because of the BMS. So if you guys actually know the answer to that, uh, let me know down in the comments. So obviously not where this solar panel is going to live. Once I get my other one, I'll probably install them up there by that tree so that they have full sun whenever the sun's up. But this is good enough for now. It's not pointed directly at the sun. It's not angled properly, so it's not going to give me the full charging wattage. At least I don't think so. Anyway, I've got my Victron Smart Solar app up and running. All I got to do is pop this circuit breaker, and then we'll see what kind of charge we get. All right, so we were at 26.7 before we connected. Yeah, it's climbing up. 80 watts, 180, holy cow, we're already at 27 volts. So we are, we are cranking out energy. So now that I've let it run a while, this thing is consistently putting out very close to 200 watts. And we're charging at about 6.3, 6.4 amps. And that's just one solar panel. So once I string up another one, then we are going to be in serious business here. Now this is just kind of a mess of wiring. I'm going to have to do all this better. In fact, I'm going to install it all under the table until I have an opportunity to build an actual little like shelf enclosure for it. Because obviously I don't want it sitting on a table right there next to my CNC mill where it's just going to get covered in sawdust. That seems like a really bad idea. But just a real quick overview. Obviously I am super stoked that I was able to get a 100% energy independent workshop for less than a thousand bucks and we're just gonna blast through a quick recap real quick so my Gerberman Poo batteries were 167 each and then I got this Sunwheel sine wave inverter 3000 watt and this thing is a beast I mean it powers up my highest draw tools without even blinking I think the display is a little bit weird that you know when I'm drawing power it just blinks incessantly but the voltage readout is exactly the same as the Victron charge controller, which is also exactly the same as my voltmeter. So it does read very accurately, as does the charge controller. The charge controller was $89. And then we have the battery balancer, which hasn't turned on yet. It only turns on when it actually has to balance the battery. So the batteries are perfectly balanced. If I never see that thing turn on, then I'm just going to send it back. But that was $23. And then, of course, I have my one solar panel out here, which cost me $85, but I'm going to be getting another one, so times two. Obviously, all of the battery cables, I think the one-foot two-gauge cables were 16, the two-foot two-gauge cables were 19, the 30-foot 10-gauge cables, which is more than I'm going to need, I'm going to have to cut those shorter, but then I'll have extra. That was $33, and then... We have all the connectors and the crimper. That was $10 and $14. So, which all adds up to a grand total of $941, even including the bar of entry items that I won't have to repurchase again for more solar projects in the future because I've got plenty of copper cable and copper connectors and the crimper. So, I won't have to buy those again. So, gotta say, I'm pretty thrilled that I am able to run my entire workshop off of solar and batteries for less than $1,000. Now, I know I gave the charge controller some grief for not accepting 10 gauge wire because that is the industry standard. And honestly, I think that's absolutely stupid. But aside from that, the thing works really good. I especially love the Victron Solar app where I can actually see how much it's charging. And then it's also got these indicator lights. You can see here that it is now absorption charging. That means the bulk of it is done. And so it's, it's kind of decreased the amount of amps that it's sending so that it can just really top off the batteries. And you can sort of see there that we're at 29 volts which means that we're pretty much 100% charged. Um, it's just doing some kind of maintenance charging right now. And this thing's only been running for about 15 minutes with that 250 watt panel. Now, we started yesterday with 90% battery. We ended with about 80% battery once I was done doing all my tests, which uh, definitely takes a lot more power to start my tools than it does to run them. 
So that's not reflective of how long the batteries will last. They'll last much longer than that if I just turn them on and leave them on. But the fact that it's able to charge it up so fast with just one panel, I gotta say, I think I did it right. I think all the stuff I got was probably the best value stuff. If you know of anything that's a better value, please let me know in the comments. This definitely has energized me and I want to do more solar off-grid build-outs. If I did anything wrong in this video, let me know because I'm still learning. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in the next video.